Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Beckwith, and I want to talk about a paper that came out recently, a preprint paper by Grant Foster and Stefan Ramsdorf called simply Global Warming Has Accelerated Significantly. So I'll discuss this paper because it's very important for where we stand and what we can expect in the near term future in terms of global temperatures, essentially blowing past the guard bands that were set at the Paris Climate Conference in 2015. Leon Simmons put together this chart based on the preprint paper. And there's five data sets that are looked at in the paper. NASA, NOAA, which is a branch of NASA, but independent for the temperature determination, the Hadley uh, Climate Research Unit, the Berkeley Research Unit, and the European Reanalysis 5 group. So basically, last year, 2024, we reached these values of temperature, degrees Celsius, and the rate of change in degrees Celsius per decade was varied. On average, it was 0 0.43 degrees Celsius per decade. It varied between 0 0.39 and 0 0.48. These numbers align very closely with James Hansen's work. Okay, and this represents a more than doubling of the rate of temperature rise in degrees Celsius per decade over previous decades. The crossing of plus 1.5 degrees Celsius um, was pegged as it tw happening in 2024 by the European uh, analysis group and 2026 by all of the others. If you take a extrapolation, a linear extrapolation above 1.5 Celsius to look at the additional cross points, then we can expect crossing 2 degrees Celsius by 2037 on average with a variance from 2034 2039. Okay, so we cross, we're, we're going to cross it very, very soon. That's in the consensus is in, in about a decade. The quickest value would be more like in uh, nine years or so. We're going to then cross 2.5 Celsius, about the 2048 time frame, three degrees Celsius, about 2060 or so. 3.5, 2072, and 4 degrees Celsius, 2084. You know, are we even going to survive these sort of huge temperature rises? And this is a linear extrapolation, okay? The rate of, of global warming acceleration in the last two years in particular, 2024, 2023, just went off the charts. So to, to suddenly say we've got a linear increase and to get these numbers, it's on the very, it's on the conservative side, of course. Now, Leon Simmons, a um, couple other, there's a lot of ways to depict what's happening, but let's go and we'll go have a look at the paper. Just want to show you a couple. This is global surface air temperature anomalies from pre-industrial. This is 2024 here. So this data was only produced up until yeah, you know, I guess it was done around September, around October of last year. So this has been updated. We know that we were well over 1.5. Um, also in 2023, we hit the 1.5 number. So that's two years in a row. And there's different ways to depict the data. Lots of interesting ways of, of portraying these global temperatures, including the warming, warming stripes. This is by Ed Hawkins who came up with this idea to portray the data like this, you know, and there's lots of other um, images, great images, but this is the one pertaining to the paper. This is the actual paper right here, Research Square, Stefan Ramsdorf, Grant Foster. This is a preprint. It's not being peer reviewed by a journal yet. 
that's underway. Basically, what they did is they they look at recent record hot years and ask the question statistically whether global warming has accelerated. Previous analysis found that the acceleration had not yet reached the 95% statistical confidence level because of natural temperature variability due to three main things for the natural variability. The El Nino, so the ENSO cycles, volcanoes, which cause some sort of temporary cooling, and variations of solar intensity, solar variation, sun, sun cycle, sunspot activity. Once they took these three natural variability factors out, the adjusted data sets clearly showed that after 2015, global temperature rose significantly faster than in pre any previous 10-year period since 1945. Okay, so they they found a strong acceleration. So I just downloaded the PDF, which is here, and global warming has accelerated significantly, um, and it came out March 3rd, 2025. Okay, so what are these guys finding out in this paper? Okay, so Foster is an American. Stefan Ramsdorf is with the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research, or PIC, P, P, PIC, PIX, Potsdam, Potsdam Institute for Climate, Potsdam, Germany. So record, recent record hot years have caused a discussion whether global warming has accelerated. Previous analysis found that acceleration has not yet reached a 95% confidence level due to these natural variability effects. I'm just repeating this because it's very important. So they took, they took out the effects of the ENSO volcanism and solar variation, and they found a break point and the global temperature actually did accelerate significantly the rise was much faster after 2015. Okay, of course, 2023 and 2024 were the Earth's hottest on record. We even exceeded the 1.5 Celsius. It says here, although to breach the 1.5 Celsius limit of the Paris Climate Accord this year would need to be exceeded not for a single year, but for the average over 20 year period centered on the time in question. So, you know, this is sort of playing games with these thresholds. You know, they didn't, that wasn't discussed before, you know, after Paris, it was always just talking about a number exceeding this number, not for a 20 year time period. So I call a bit of uh, BS over this sort of um, way to deal with it. You know, this is like a bit of a bologna sandwich, a BS to me. Um, the average rate has been about 0.2 Celsius per decade. Right now we're at 0.43 or so, we're double it. And Hansen's talked about that a lot in his letters and notes over the last year or two. Okay, so what they did is, so, you know, basically the statistics is important. You have to factor out the random variations. It can be very suggestive of a change in the trend rate which caused speculation in the early 2000s that global warming had slowed or even stopped, right? The infamous pause, but that was not statistically significant. So you got to make sure that these increases, this acceleration is statistically significant. So how do they do that? They, they do what is called a change point analysis, which is a standard statistical technique to identify trend changes in a time series. So if you did that on the data until 2023, you didn't see a, a significant change in the warming trend to the 95% confidence level. When you include the year 2024 and do the analysis, um, two of the five data sets show a statistical um, significance to the acceleration. However, However, there's still fluctuations, right, that we know about. So why don't we subtract the effects of the ends of these three reasonably well understood contributions to the variability of the temperature record, namely, number one, the El Nino Southern Oscillation or the ENSO. Number two, the cooling influence of volcanic eruptions. And three, the variations of the solar 
luminosity or solar intensity. This is the sunspot uh, activity, solar cycles. These three can be quantified by independent measurements and their effect on global temperature established by, an, by a lagged correlation analysis. So they use that procedure to the temperature data sets. So they have the unadjusted data and they have the adjusted data which, which subtracts these variation effects, these three variation effects. And you can see it in the data that the El Nino peaks in 98, 2016, 2024 are significantly removed. And uh, then you can have a look, um, and basically the data shows that the warming over the last decade is 0.4 degrees Celsius per decade or higher. Okay, so they removed the ENSO volcanism and solar variations. Let's have a look at the data. So if you remove those, it reduces the noise level. It makes the global warming acceleration significant statistically to at least a 95% level showing that, yeah, global warming has greatly accelerated. And uh, the data all shows it will exceed the 1.5 limit by late 2026. That's even accounting for the um, statistical claims. So let's have a look at the figures. Okay, so these are the five data sets, and you can see how closely they go together. This is 1950 to present day. Then if you take out the um, exogenous or external factors, namely the ENSO, volcanoes, and the solar cycle, then you get a smooth curve with much less variability, and you can see how the rate of change of increase is sloping upwards. It's concave upwards. There's a definite strong acceleration occurring, pops right out. And these are some of the numbers of the endpoint. Um, you know, the values, degrees Celsius above pre-industrial and the rate of change. And when we can expect to cross 1.5, according to the statistics of that 20 year time scale, and we get a 2026 number, basically. Um, this is showing some of the uh, change point analysis of the data set. So this is the NASA, NOAA, Hadley uh, Climate Research Unit, Berkeley, and the European reanalysis. And you can see, um, so this is just depicted, this is just part of the analysis. And they go into great detail over the statistical methods. There's some more change point analysis for the different data sets. Um, okay, so that's the gist of it. It's a little statistical study. Uh, my initial slide here showing global warming has accelerated is, you know, Leon Simmons has taken these rates and, and looked at if you do, if you extrapolate linearly to the present pre presented warming rates, these rates here, then this is when you cross all these various temperatures. And you can see this is very conservative because the, you know, extrapolating linearly is a, the most conservative thing you can do, assuming global warming acceleration still occurs, these numbers are upper level numbers and things will happen even faster than that. Okay, so you can see that basically we have a global emergency situation. Global warming has greatly accelerated. This really agrees with what James Hansen has been saying for an awful long time. If you follow his work, I've done videos on each of his recent papers. And you can see that we're in a global climate emergency, although you wouldn't know it by, you know, how much it's discussed these days. So, you know, I think it's going to become absolutely vital to people are looking at carbon dioxide removal methods, methane removal methods from the atmosphere. That's only the second leg of the bar stool. The first leg is slash fossil fuel emissions. I've been saying that for ever. And the third leg is solar radiation management or SRM. Some people prefer calling it solar reflection or solar reflectivity methods. Um, you know, the primary method among them is SAI or stratospheric aerosol injection. And clearly, because we're in an emergency here, I'll discuss in great detail uh, SRM methods um, very, very shortly.
Um, <clears throat> okay, so thank you for listening. Uh, please go to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and donating donate to PayPal to support my research and videos, or consider going to my online store and you can get uh, a t-shirt, All Hell's Breaking Loose, Climate Mayhem, Connecting the Dots, Abrupt Climate System Mayhem, etc., various other sayings um, that I've said over the years, and you can get it on a t-shirt. So anyway, thanks for your support. Thank you for watching. Please share to um, social media, all different types of social media, to get the message out on how, how dire our climate situation actually is. And thank you to Leon Simmons for generating this excellent table, summarizing the different crossing points of all these different temperatures that we talk about. And they're getting closer and closer to the present. And, uh, you know, this is a present day emergency. It's not something, you know, in 10 years from now or 20 years from now, it's happening today. So thank you for listening and bye for now.